All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, nine o'clock, for over six years. Is it going on seven years yet, Todd? Is it, is it six? Um, we're or seven going on years? eight years, Dave. We are going on eight. 2000. <laughs> I feel like this is 16, deja vu. 2016 ish. All right. So, so for, for going on eight years, Todd and I have been doing a Friday Mastermind where we bring in badass people and we just mastermind. We learn from them. Um, the best ones are when you, the audience, participate. Like if we do a little shout out, like participate. If I throw up some ad hoc uh, survey, like vote, participate. Um, ask Shayla a question. We have Shayla Gifford today. But before we bring her on stage, uh, Todd, is there anything else you want to say to open the call and frame it? You know, I'm just really excited. There's there's not very many people that I would uh, excuse myself for the first hour of the Wealth Mastermind I'm part of to make sure that I hang out with her on Zoom. You know, of course, I love you and Deborah, Dave, but uh, anytime I can spend time with my good friend, Shayla Gifford, I'm going to be here. So I'm uh, I'm all in. I'm super excited. And uh, speaking of Deborah, good morning, Miss Bird. How are you? I'm good. Good morning. Anything you want to say to kick this off today, Deb? Any, uh, it, well, I, I thought you were going to say like, you know, the best part of these Friday masterminds is when, you know, I joined in like 2020, 2021, but you know, I, you. I just made that up in my head. So <laughs> I'm going to own it. Yourself. Advocate for we've, been, we've definitely been better since then. There's no doubt. We've been way I better. I keep it weird. And you guys know, I love Shayla. And for those of you who are participating, like it's not every day that you get to spend an hour with someone like Shayla. So be selfish, be all in, turn everything else off. Don't there be scared go. to ask questions. Like, let's go. All right. So a so. couple of things before we bring Shayla on stage and we talk about like, what should you be doing to win? We are going to have Jeremy Forcia come in at some point. So 15 to 20 minutes, we'll have my partner in crime. I'm working out of his studio in Petaluma, California. Says great people deserve great advice. Jeremy and I just did a little 10-minute clip on why that matters to him. And then he also shared um, his perspective and leadership of how you should be balancing your time between refis and realtors. So check that out. Jeremy and I just talked about that for about 10 minutes. So guys, we, we have Shayla Gifford, and I think most people who have tuned in, you know who she is, but she's a very prolific, top producing um, leader. You know, her team is going to do over $100 million this year. She's leading a, a region for Guild that with about 65 loan officers that's chasing a billion. Uh, they're, they're over $650 million. It looks like if they trend where they're at, they're going to be like eight to 900 million. And I'll bet you that Shayla will absolutely be leading a region that does over a billion in 2025. So um, can't wait to see that growth opportunity happen. Uh, Shayla, you picked the topic, you know, it, anything you want to add to why you picked that headline of that topic today? The so last week I'm sitting in a conference and I always grow the most sitting in a conference. For whatever reason, it takes me plucking myself out of my daily life, my daily routine, the, the consistent thoughts and things that go through my head and like really take a time out, right? Sit down and say, I'm here to work on my business, to think about my life and the direction I'm going, to be inspired and looking for a new mentor, looking for a new thought process, looking for um, an expanded path. And I'm in this room with mega, mega, mega entrepreneurs in real estate. Okay. Like these are generally team leaders. This is a John Cheplak event, Cheplak, Tahoe, and Incline. Um, they are leaders that have 40, 50, 80 realtors on their team. They often have a flipping business, a wholesale business, um, you know, some sort of title arm, insurance arm, mortgage partnership, whatever. I know Todd Bookspan right now is in this similar room because he brought me to the Be Wealthy event around Brett Tanner in May of 2023. And it was stepping into these rooms and these conferences that has really lit me back on fire. That has helped me design that next level that I am striving to be and do and the, the purpose that I wanna have. And as I'm sitting in this room, I go, how did this happen? Like where the hell did these people come from? How did they grow to this level? 
And what I realized you guys was, I think it started, you know, there's always been driven people in real estate and we've always wanted to figure out a better way, but I've been doing this 20 years now. I started in 04. I started at 23 years old. I'm now 43. And I remember the first 10 years of my career, I, six years, I never went to a conference. I didn't have a coach. I didn't think that people wanted to share their secrets and their best practices, because why would a competitor tell me what they're doing and what was working? Right. And I went to my first coaching conference in 2010 and was blown away that there was people willing to share their playbook, to literally say, this is how I do everything from this conversation to this follow-up to this, you know, strategy to organizing my life. And something similar started happening in the real estate industry around then. And I want to give some credit, I think, to Gary Keller for writing the book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and for outlining models and frameworks, you know, the economic model, the budget model, the, the team scaling model that really got people thinking about how do I go from being a rugged individualist, a solo agent, a solo and in our world, a solo loan officer that's working 10, 12 hours a day, that's probably having a roller coaster business. One month they're killing it. The next minute they're scrounging, going, great, I got to get more leads. To actually systematizing lead generation, ROI on expenses, building a scalable team. And so you had that happen where people all of a sudden got one assistant and then they got a buyer's agent. And then now they might have a transaction coordinator and then they got a listing specialist. And now they started building big teams. They got these Zillow Flex accounts. They, you know, started spending money on Google AdWords. And then, then they have mega teams and then they have expansion teams. And then they're just straight up entrepreneurs that start adding other verticals into their mix. And it really inspired me because I got to speak on stage at this event. And I'm thinking, what can I possibly say as a mortgage chick? As, as a girl who started out as a loan officer in 2004 and has had my own similar journey, like by far, I'm not an entrepreneur to that level. I do have a hard money uh, business that I run. I do have rentals. I do have storage facilities. My husband does day trading. So I guess I kind of do, <laughs> I kind of do qualify, but um, not to that level. But I said, how can I share something that is really going to matter to this audience. And for our community, I want you to know what I shared. First, I shared that the tools that I use to help create top producers, because the longest time I didn't want to hire other LOs. I thought loan officers just talked out of both sides of their mouth. They threw noodles against the wall and prayed that they would stick. They weren't good, like systematic technicians or people that actually follow through with their promises. I didn't, I wasn't around a lot of like super quality professionals in the first part of my career. So when I opened my own branch and I, I was like, I want to create my own culture. That's no drama. That's all about just crushing it and doing a fantastic job. I want to make money, no drama, go home. That was my vision. I didn't really think I wanted to grow other LOs. I just, I just didn't. And you know, God ended up having a different plan for me. And all of a sudden I could show you my slide because I, it's kind of fascinating. I had to go back and really like decode this growth story that I had from starting at Gill Mortgage in 09 as one girl, no other team to having a billion dollar team eight years later. Like how the hell did that happen? So my first part of the talk was about what are the tools that I use to help loan officers go from being an unorganized, chaotic, big personality salesperson to becoming a business person, to creating a vision for their lives around building a business, a reputation, a team, systems and processes that make business work and not be so frantic and anxiety filled, but also that build real wealth. Because at the end of the day, I think about who do I wanna be as a professional? I want to have a reputation that if you hang out with me, you make more money, period, because we're in business to make money and save money. And so I went over the tools that I use in my annual retreats, which is showing people what does it take to retire, you know, doing a wheel of life and looking at the whole person and setting goals. 
um, down to like the monthly budget I do with my team every single month. And then also the money rules, like what are the tactical rules around money? So I gave this audience some of the tools that I use and I was shocked you guys that they don't do a lot of this stuff, right? See, we're money people, we're finance people. And so like, to me, it felt very natural to help my loan officers have a budget, have them plan with their money, build wealth and, and be on a journey of going, okay, you're currently at zero. I got to get you to $2 million in cash net worth. Like let's go. Those weren't tools that they were using. So that was the first part of the presentation. I promise I'm going to shut up in a second. <laughs> and then the second part of the presentation was talking about, um, what's real and what's going on in the business today. Like what are the real revenues, the real margins, a real business model that works. And my hope was in that room that some of these mega entrepreneurs, they want to be in the mortgage business. They want to figure out how to work with us and, and create a pay to play. Okay. They just do, they, they want into our action. So I was like, look, this is what it takes. And these are the type of, you know, partnerships you could create. And then on the flip side, a lot of these mega agents know great loan officers all around the country that don't have these tools, the support, this accountability, that don't have the leadership or the roadmap to go out and scale like the realtors have built, right? They have this book and they went to these conferences and they did this stuff. And so my, my effort was, let me, let me just show you and expose and be transparent and tell you the real deal. And then hopefully you'll refer me your best and brightest loan officers uh, to follow up on it. So the aha moment for me is that I have helped a lot of loan officers scale to build teams, to get life balance, to double, triple, quadruple their income, to build wealth. I've done that. What I haven't done well in my next chapter is helping people really become a trailblazer. And I'm doing this through Catalyst. And I'm doing this now through my retreats is like giving people a much bigger vision and actually teaching them how to be a good producing manager and lead other people. Um, because I haven't duplicated myself that well. So I don't know, I could go on and on about the things that I learned. Cause I went to another conference after that and, um, I just feel on fire, but that that's kind of like where my head is at, like coming to you. So I was already writing the outline for the book that I need to write <laughs> this morning <laughs> at 6.00 AM because of how, how, um, how inspired I am by what's happened on the real estate side. So, so Shayla, at some point, and actually after I, I I'm going to say something and then I'd love for you to just show that story that slide that you're talking about in a minute here. But I, when you see this and you see what Shayla has accomplished, I've, I've got to observe Shayla now for years. I mean, I've, I've interviewed her multiple times. I've, um, she, we've shared some dinners at some events that we've been to. I've, I've observed her at events and here's what I've observed. I've observed someone that no matter where she's at, she's all in like, like she's at an event She's in, you know, probably not front row, but she's in an aisle so that she can leave and she is taking copious notes. And if she does leave that event, she left it to probably go talk to a recruiter, solve a problem, but she's not gone long. Like she's at an event. Shayla's, you know, there are some people that are super high level that go to events and then they're never in the room. And, and when they are in the room, they're still not taking notes like Shayla Gifford. And, and, and so, first of all, when you look at this success, you've, you've got someone that is coachable and you've got someone that's all in wherever she's at. And then I've noticed, because I've been at dinners with her, she's all in, you know, with the people around her. Um, so I just, I, I want to call that out as a success trait that, and, and by the way, she goes to events. Uh, she advocates, you know, the company that she Leeds is always a sponsor of the Modern Mortgage IQ, Modern Mortgage Summit event. Uh, like she's into like putting herself in rooms that elevate and then being all in. And then I also know she's taking action because usually like a day or two after the event, Shayla, like, hey, Dave, these were some of my top takeaways. You know, what did you think? She usually has a good idea that helps, you know, if it's the Modern Mortgage Summit, gives me feedback that Todd and I can use to make it better. Again, she's all, all in. So Shayla, why don't you show those 
the, that that those couple slides on your story, and then Todd and Deborah, you, you guys be ready for some questions. Thank you for giving me that because I just wrote those down. I'm like, oh, those are all like sub chapters in my book. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's obvious. Like I'm just calling out very obvious success habits that you have, and life skills and life habits that power your success. Yep. Guys, so we'll tease her when she gets back, but I'm pretty sure that when she went to share the screen, she hit the wrong button. Um, she'll be right back. Todd, anything you want to say while we're waiting for Shay? I mean, I think you kind of nailed oh. it, right? I mean, Shayla's all in. There she is. She's Sorry. always all in. And it and it's I think it's part of the reason that when Shayla's like, hey, Todd, will you come uh, speak at my Catalyst event? I'm like, I don't even have to think twice about it. I'm like, okay, how can I move around my calendar to make sure that I'm I'm there and I'm part of that experience? Yeah. And, so and Deborah too. Uh, I, I mean, these two absolutely crushed it at the May event. And um, it's, oh my God. So yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's, I'm really smart that I like to be around really incredible people and I want to be worthy of being at that table. I want to be giving so much value so that I can be worthy of like being in the crew. Right. And so to be on this call is like being part of the crew and to be part of the crew with Todd and Deb and what they're doing and the workshops you guys are hosting and the impact that you're making is incredible. Um, so, um, okay. So these are the two slides that I put together. I just condensed them onto one PDF so you could see it, but, um, I, you know, I kind of just said, shared some of this stuff about my personal story and that the first six years of my career, I didn't have a mentor or manager really, I had a manager, but I didn't have a proven success model. I didn't have a path to follow. Um, there's Jeremy and Jeremy and I met at our very first coaching conference together. We were like sitting at the same freaking table and started our journey together. Um, so the first six years, I'm just bumping around, trying to figure it out, working 10, 12 hours a day, taking my phone and computer on every vacation I've ever been on. Um, nothing about what I'm doing is sexy except for the $300,000 paycheck uh, that I'm earning as a college dropout and a blonde chick in Reno, Nevada in my twenties. That was the only thing that was quote unquote sexy, but behind the scenes, hot, chaotic mess full, filled with stress. Um, the next 10 years though, is when I start getting into these rooms, going to events, meeting quality people and just being vulnerable and coachable and saying, I want to improve. I want to get better. I want to bust through these levels of frustration. And so that's where I went in the next 10 years from zero to a billion. Um, I had two babies, I built a house, I slowly hired loan officers. I became a core coach for eight years. And my greatest accomplishment was in one year, we helped 15 people go to presence club. I actually think it was in 2018 that we did that, not 20, but during the COVID years, I moved to Spain. I lived there for three years. I uh, really wanted to focus on pouring into my family. Um, so I did that. We did, we took a wild move and, and did that. I worked nights, um, built the business and ran, ran the business from zoom. My personal production, of course, everybody knows what happens in the COVID years. My team actually ballooned up over 1.6 billion. My personal production went over 700 units a couple of years in a row. Um, and then the last two years is what I've really been talking about. It's like really finding my fire what is that next challenge I'm going to go after? Um, getting my personal team production back up to 100 million, um, growing my branches back up to a billion dollars again. Um, and then I started a coaching company. I started Catalyst in July. Um, and I've hired now 34 loan officers this year, just signed another one yesterday in seven locations. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm now expanding nationally to, to help grow people. Um, but for all those people who want to grow into what I would call a trailblazer, um, to start having multiple streams of income. So it's not just hundred percent dialed into your personal production. This is the branch story, um, if you will. And at the beginning, you can see that, you know, uh, 60 over 50 to 60% of the production in the branch was me. So, you know, and, and of course those are really fun years. I think this, the thing that I'm really fired up about again, and Jeremy, you have to tell me if you feel the same way, but when we started and started following the plan and doing the things that you're talking about, Dave, and like, here's what we do a theme day, do a TCA for every client, be process oriented, make so many calls, 
It was right there, you guys, in 2010. And if you go pull back historically where volumes have been, like it, the market also lifted at the same time. So if you can get your efforts and activities to match the market growth, like it's explosive. Like, I mean, seriously, I went from 145 units to 228 to 513 to 472. You look, if you go look at market stats, 2014, there was a pullback in the market. My units went down a hundred units. I was doing the same freaking effort, if not more, and the units pulled back. So a large part of our success right now, you guys, is market conditions. You've got to stop beating yourself up. If there's this many loans in the market, get as many of them as you can, but there's that many loans in the market. But, but build your habits and your rituals and your process and your self-worth and, and your rhythms because when the, once the market turns on as it's really starting to, these are the kind of explosive results that start happening. And then you can see that I started duplicating myself because I started saying, hey, do what I'm doing. And my loan officer started doing what I'm doing. And then that's you know the results that we had. The, in terms of recruiting the number of LOs, you could see I did not like go crazy recruiting. I've never been like a real recruiter until like this last year where I'm like, shit, my volume went from 1.6 billion to 400 million with the same people. <laughs> it's down 75%. The only way to get out of this problem is to grow. And I've got the energy. I want to lead. I'm going to grow. So that's where you see now that I've had a lot of growth in terms of loan officers. But if you look there, I hired one in a year, then maybe two the next year, then four the next year. And by the way, look at the number of newbies. I didn't always hire loan officers. I was growing people from that LOA role into becoming LOs. So you can see in 2014, five of my LP1s or LP2s, those LOAs became their own independent loan officers. And each year after that, I popped one, two, three, or four uh, of those LOAs into becoming loan officers. I'm going to call these years, COVID-19, 2021, the complacent years. I moved to Spain. I stopped growing. I was more in the harvesting versus the growth phase of my career. I, yes, I got a little bit burned out and obviously the market turned on. We were doing five, 6,000 units. It was, it was crazy town, but I will tell you my business wouldn't have dropped 75% had I stayed with my foot on the gas in enrollment and bringing on new relationships, new partners and new recruits. And I think many of us learned that the hard way and we saw a huge dip because of it. So there's a lot of lessons that could be learned from here. Um, but for me, yeah. just putting it together helps me go back in time and say, what did we do? So thanks for letting so, me share. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing that. I'm going to make a statement. And if you could stop sharing just so we can have a little fireside chat now. And Todd, I'm going to throw it to you for a question. But I do want to make a statement and give a coaching piece of advice. Like Shayla created that slide because she's a keynote speaker and she speaks in front of real estate companies and so on. But I would push everybody to document your story this way. I would push you to, you know, what was your production? If you are a producing leader, um, I'd have a couple buckets of loan officers. And by the way, two of the buckets I'd push everybody to have is you have how many loan officers that were meeting your standards today and in the future versus how many didn't. So when you do this for yourself, make sure that you're looking at your story and categorizing it in, in, in like seasons. And then I would also push everybody that, guys, we are officially in a new season. The market has shifted. The Fed put an explanation mark on it. They always keep lowering rates. So how long will this season be? How low will rates go? We do not know. But when you look at the demographics and you look at the data, I believe that over the next three to five years, we have a spectacular time to gain market share and win as mortgage professionals. And the question is, like, Everybody's going to 2x because we're moving into a 10x market. It's going to be easier. Are you going to 2x or are you going to 10x? And 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 Shayla Gifford is going to 10x. So that's my statement. That's my coaching advice. Todd, any questions you have? And then we'll bring Jeremy in and then Deborah in and we'll mastermind. Well, let me just take on your you know 2x versus 10x. I mean, Shayla, what do you think is going to be 
you know, the, the top thing or things that a loan officer who's listening to this needs to do today in order to make sure that they 10 X their business over the next 15 months versus just to exit. I believe in this model. See it, believe it, do it. See it, believe it, do it. So I think right now, if I'm a loan officer, I am looking for that next mentor. I am finding somebody right now who has what I want. I'm going to get, spend time around them and I'm going to do what they do. If I just, if you are just in your own head as I was for six years, super driven and super motivated, but I had limited vision. I, I literally just was like, I want to do more. I want to do more loans. I want to do more loans. And, and that was it. And I, I didn't really have an impetus for change because I, I had never seen it. So if you're somebody doing 15 million a, a year right now, find that person doing 50 million that you can relate to. Okay. Like I'm hiring a bunch of 30 year olds right now and I'm loving it because they can still see me at 43. They're 33. I'm 43. And then go, okay, I relate to you enough. I, I, I can look at your team. Now I can come literally watch your team. I can, and, and I can duplicate that. Right. Um, but if you don't have that person, I think it's so much harder. And so I would challenge you to get on an airplane, to go to events, to go to exactly what to say, to be on these calls. I mean, shoot, you guys just go spend three hours binging a trust engine YouTube. I was literally working out this morning and watching Alonzo's um, refi thing with you that, and it was killer. And I might look at him and go, that's my mentor. And then ask for help. Say, what did you do? What do you do on Monday? What do you do on Tuesday? What do you do on Wednesday? Um, for most of us, we won't consistently do the work because we don't have a locked in vision that we believe is possible for us. And that was the shift for me. Jeremy, I'd love to see if that was a case for you, but I saw Josh Sigmund. He made a million dollars a year and I'm like, okay, he's kind of normal, kind of normal. Like me, like if he can do it, yeah, why can't I do it? And I just surrendered and followed the process. And then of course, it's a lot more activity consistently. It is using that planner, Todd, and having it out every freaking day and playing the game with yourself and winning the day and having five quality two minute conversations and two live face-to-face -face meetings every single day for the rest of your business life with higher and higher quality people. But I don't think you're going to do the work and do the conversations and stuff unless you have that, that mentor, that avatar, that model that you're going after. So Jeremy, let's get you in the party here. Thank you for joining us. By the way, folks, I had dinner with Jeremy last night. He is on track also to do over a hundred million in team production. And he is chasing a billion, uh, you know, it's looking like eight or 900 million. Um, again, we have two epic top 1% producing leaders. So Jeremy, anything you want to comment from what you heard and what question do you have for Shayla? You're on mute if you're talking. And by the way, Jeremy, I'm working at a Jeremy's office at his studio. So if he can't figure out how to use his mic, he can always come join me a couple doors down. Um, you can see him trying to figure out how to unmute himself. We're going to give him a couple more seconds. Shayla. Yeah. You thank you. To, thank you to Danny and Rebecca for saying how many years they've been in their head and, and for acknowledging that because it is pretty amazing how, you know, if you were like me, you probably believe people don't want to teach you or if, if it's up to me, if it's going to be, it's up to me. You know, I just need to work harder. <laughs> like, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Like I'd hit a ceiling on all of those mantras. I like literally hit a plateau and a ceiling and I was going a little insane and I was afraid I just got married and my husband is rad. Like he, he doesn't miss, like, did you guys see him cleaning up bear shit? Like all the bear trash in his robe on the driveway yesterday, <laughs> like, <laughs> And I was like afraid that if I kept going the way I was going, I wouldn't have a marriage at all, let alone a great one. Um, and so, you know, 
getting getting out of your head is important. Can we hear you now, Jared? Yeah. And by the way, guys, I shared a link to the interview with Alfonso Esposito that Shayla said she listened to. Just a great leader out of the New Jersey market, mid central New Jersey. But it was it was really how is he balancing refis and realtors? And so um, the link to that is in chat. If you were watching this um, on YouTube, the link will be down below. And Jeremy, if you can't solve it quickly, why don't you run over here and sit next to me? All right, guys. Deborah, any questions you have for Shayla? Well, I love the fact that you had talked about um, finding your mentor because I, I talk to a lot of loan officers and sometimes you just can't see the problem. And that's probably even with clients too and your partners. When you can't see the problem, you can't fix the problem. And it's often where you need someone else, whether it's through accountability or mentorship, who helps you believe in yourself at times when you have forgotten or you've like buried it so down deep because maybe you were in your head or you you weren't living life on fire. And, you know, Shayla, speaking about your event, what made it amazing is you have a, a natural ability and, and maybe it's learned over time where we were able to be great because you make us feel great in our own skin. Like we don't have to perform. We don't have to be on. It can be real and raw and messy. And we're all going to get into the mess together and then make it beautiful. And so um, I can't express enough putting yourself intentionally in rooms to help others expose things in you that maybe you haven't been able to see or maybe ask yourself. So um, I think you have another event coming up like in, in a month and I would highly encourage people. I mean, it is life changing. Yeah, I agree. She's changed my life. <laughs> He's uh, back. And your mic. Thank God. I had to get off the good camera and microphone and I don't know. There we go. So uh, it's all good. But Shayla's the best, man. And one thing that she said that I just love that I wrote down was it reminded me of an Ariana Grande song. It's like, you know, I, um, I see it. I like it. I want it. I get it. Like, and that oh, is yeah. what it is to find, right? I see it. I see the people doing the things and they're having the su success. I want it. Okay, cool. You like them? Awesome. Go get it. Copy exactly like what they are doing. Like do uh, pursue those people. I've had so many mentors from afar that I just followed. Dave Savage being one of the originals. Like OG, my second year in the business, cold called him, right? And was like, hey, what's this mortgage coach thing that you need to install on your computers like hardware back then? Like, you know, and 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 he called me back and I liked what I saw and boom, I started harassing him, right? Like you just have to chase the people that are doing things or have done things that you want to do, but you've got to get out of your own way. So she she used the word surrender without saying surrender, but like you like don't question what they tell you to do. Like, just do it. If you see it, you like it, you want it, you get it. Like you have the get it part is just doing exactly what they do, doing exactly what they say. And don't question it. Don't question, but I don't know if that's going to work for me in my market. Like it is going to work. I guarantee you it will work, but you have to get out of your own way. So I just love that you shared that, Shayla, because it's the same story for me. And by the way, any people that has accomplished any type of level of production that they want to do that's big, it's the same. There is no different story. So stop trying to create a different story that you're going to be the one that figures it out and writes an algorithm. And like, you you know, you're not just so you know. Like, you know what it is, though? <clears throat> you know what it is, Jeremy? And I think this is where you and I need to expose ourselves. Is that like, I, I literally had like five coaching calls yesterday. And what ultimately comes up is our insecurity yeah, and the insecurity that I'm kind of an imposter. <laughs> like I, I don't want to be found out. Like for example, um, two different women yesterday that seriously, they're in their early thirties. They are so driven, ambitious, smart, talented, charismatic, hustling. Like, I mean, seriously, more, more talent in their fingertips and both of these women were like, yeah, but I'm not a great technician. You know, this is where I kind of, um, you know, I have, I have insecurity and I'm so grateful that they're sharing this with me because I was, they're like, now I I'm probably underselling myself. Like I know how to do loans. Like I know how to put together a loan, but 
I'm not like, and I'm going, okay, what, what do you think you need to be in order to break through to this next level in your life? Like you're operating here and you know, in your gut and your soul and your fiber and your being that that next two or three levels is there for you. Like, like that. And you're so frustrated that you keep banging your head in the wall. You're, you're barely getting a power bar for dinner. You're, you don't even have time to pee in your day. Your stress is a level 10. You don't have an LOA, you know, you need one, but you're afraid to miss business. So you don't stop and do that. And you're just in this kind of rut, like you're telling me that it's, you feel like an imposter that you're not perfect yet, or you don't have it dialed in yet to get to that next level. And so I guess what I just want to say, and I would love to hear from all of you, cause we've all busted through this, but like, I mean, I am like, I don't have the people skills for a long time to like go win friends and influence people. Like I'm an introvert and I like being behind a spreadsheet. I like hiding behind a TCA and nerding out alone. So that's, that's genuinely who I am. And I had to go. And if I sat around and go, Oh, but I'm, I'm not that person who runs a networking event. I'm not that person who likes, I hate entertaining. I hate having people to my house. Hate it. I just had 50 people for my husband's birthday. And it was actually awesome okay. because of the way I structured the event, but I structured it now because I just do things I'm uncomfortable doing. But I could have sat over here in Reno, Nevada, stuck at $300,000 a year, not having any team or any help and saying, I'm not good at delegation. I'm afraid that I'm going to be too demanding and scary. And my claws are going to come out because I've got really high standards. And I'm afraid that I'm going to get found out and that I'm really not a good networker because I never left my freaking desk and I'm not good at like prospecting. And so I might as well just stay doing what I'm doing. Um, so I, anyway, I, maybe that's where we all need to be exposed that we all, despite feeling massively insecure, decided we wanted it more than staying the same and, and then yeah. chose to do those things. We don't, and, 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 uh, you know, we decide that every day still, I want everyone to hear this. Like, this isn't like something you conquer and then you're yeah. like, oh, I'm super secure now. Like last night when I was hanging out with Dave in the hot tub, chilling after dinner, talking, and I've told him, like, I'm just good at saying what I'm insecure about now rather than say, like, I'm just like, so I said, hey, man, I feel really vulnerable. It's how I preface it when I share my, yeah, I feel really vulnerable saying this, but like, I'm really bad at strategy. Like, like at integrating strategy, like I'm, and I went on and on and on and on. And Dave was like, what are you talking about? You're really good at strategy from everything I see. And it, but I'm insecure about it. I don't feel that I'm good at strategy. I don't, I feel less than in that um, lane. I feel less than on like how to um, cohesively do it because my brain thinks in like a psychedelic pattern. So I feel insecure about how I'm putting the pieces together, right? Like, is it right? Is it the right way? And I still have those same insecurities in that lane. I've had those insecurities about calling people, cold calling. I've had those insecurities about making friends in an authentic way because like Shayla, I am a naturally actually, I love to be alone. <laughs> like, like I've learned to be an extrovert social person in social settings, but I actually love just what we did last night, Dave, like hang around, cook with like one person and chill and have a deep conversation. I don't like chit chat, like, like all, all of those things. And so these are things that you, when you're insecure, it's great because you can fix it, but it never goes away. There's always going to be something that you feel vulnerable and you're insecure about and running into it rather than away from it, which is what Shayla's saying. You have to run into it face first into the wall is how you break through the wall. And you're going to be doing that over and over and over and over again. And that's where greatness happens. The last thing I wanted to comment on what Shayla said before is that I want you guys to all visualize like a tsunami, okay? A tsunami hitting the shore, right? Like, so a, if you don't know what a tsunami is, if you're like 22 or something, I don't know. Like a tsunami hitting the shore, right? Is a gigantic, like 200 foot wave. It's like, a, it's destructive, but if you're the actual wave, it's pretty awesome, right? You're like, yes, I've been waiting for this moment forever. Tsunamis start 50, 100 miles out in the middle of the ocean, okay? So way out where you can't see it. You can't see all the work it's slowly building and doing like 100 miles out. 
but you see it when it hits. And that's what she was showing you is the momentum of doing all the activities regardless of market conditions. So if a tsunami is building 100 miles out, it might get bigger and a little smaller. It doesn't look violent. That's the market. And it's dumb to say that I'm going to grow 2x in every market no matter what. That when, you're think, when you're talking about production, that's dumb. OK, but when you're talking about how you can grow and take market share and increase relationships and follow the process and what can I do every single day that is going to move the needle, that's how you 2x, 4x when the market moves. Like it's people that don't do that, that do the same amount of freaking loans every year, no matter what. I have I have people that work for me like that, like in COVID, they still did four loans a month. Yeah. Like and I was just like, how is this possible? Right. Because. <laughs> You have to do the work every day. You have to be the tsunami a hundred miles out, not just when it's time to the wave to hit the shore. Like, and that's how you 2X, that's how I'm 2Xing, right? Like is that I've been dialed in for a year on impact conversations, present, be present, impact conversations, be present, impact conversations. And that's why I'm doing way more loans than my peers in my current market right now. It's because of the hundred miles a year ago that I was out in the ocean and paddling and paddling and paddling and just making sure that I'm going to build that wave. And then when the refi thing hits, which we're just at the beginning, right? Like I have $35 million pipeline right now. Dave was asking me like, he's like, what's your pipeline look like? I'm like 35 million active vials, right? Like, so, and 50% of that is purchase business. 50% of it is refinance business. I don't know when the refis will close because it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> like it, it, what matters to me is the momentum and the commitments that I have on disclosed files of people that are ready to go, right? And so you have to look at it as a tsunami. That's how I envision it of your activities, your attitude, like, and you, you're far out, but if you do the work every day, you'll 2X, 3X when a market presents the opportunity. Jeremy, can we just talk about the 50-50 mix? So yeah. what you're saying is that you've disclosed $17 yeah. million dollars in refis, yes. but they might be all just sitting waiting for a specific rate coupon or specific closing costs or specific benefit to then lock, mm -hmm. but you've gotten yeah. them to commit to say, I trust you, Jeremy, watch it closely for me when it's ready, yeah. kill it. So it's a snipe. So I lead, I don't let them tell me let's get it started and let's wait. Like I snipered all of these. So these are very- So focused. tell us a snipe, give me, I'm a client, sniper me, yeah. let's go. So so really simple. First of all, you need the data. So print off every person you've closed in the last 18 months, right? You need to know like, what are the interest rate? I sort it from high to low on rate. And then I chose 20 people, right? To reach out to just 20, 17 is the actual number. I chose 17 people to reach out to, but I was like, I could do these right now right? Like if I wanted to. So I reached out to them first. So Shayla, you're one of those people. Hey, Shayla, it's Jeremy Forcier. How are you? I'm good, Jeremy. Awesome. Hey, I told you that I'd be monitoring the interest rates for your no cost refinance, the certificate that I gave you, like I'm um, saying that we're going to do a refinance for you at no cost. So I was calling to remind you that that is still in play. Right on. Okay. Yeah. I also wanted to know if it, would you like to exercise that now and save $737 a month, or would you like to wait to see maybe if you could save $800 a month? Oh, um, I mean, you're blowing my mind. It's $737 a month. What right. would have, what, what would have to change to save 800? Well, you know, before I ask you that, are you more interested in saving money monthly or were you more interested in learning how to keep your payment the same and save $297,000 in payments? Which one sounds like more interesting to you? I mean, again, you're blowing my mind with both. I would, I would love to see both. Okay, cool. I'm going to pause here. Dave, did I tell you that's not the response last night? I went through this with Dave. That is yeah, what she said is what the client says, literally. Right. So, yeah. so then I go, Hey, great. Well, what I'm going to do is put together like a little presentation for you. Um, it's going to be a video overview, right. Of what the options are right now. And we don't have to lock this in right away that we can get this fully underwritten and approved. There's no commitments or anything like that. And we can wait over the next few weeks to see if the rates tick down just a little bit more. And then you would save 800, but in the worst case scenario, I'm projecting $737 a month of savings. Let's do it. 
Yeah, that's what they say. Okay. <laughs> they, they say, where do, I, how do we start is usually what they say. Okay. Okay. Wow. Now, but let me be tougher on you and say, um, okay, that sounds great, Jeremy, but I'm still going to have to really review this because I need to know what the costs are. And the Fed is supposedly expected to have multiple rate cuts. So yeah. I don't want to have to refi multiple times and pay multiple fees. Um, so when do I get to see exactly what it costs me and uh, what the rates are and all that? I love that you said this, Shayla. So that's exactly what we're doing is that we're going to set this up for you and show you that here is where we see it right now. Here's where we think it could go if the Fed continue, continues to cut rates, et cetera. We don't have to do anything, but what we do have to do is be prepared because there's a date I want you to write down if you have a pen and paper, Shayla. I want I'm you ready. to write down this date. Uh, May 10th, 2023. Okay. And Got it. So the reason why I wanted you to write that down is that that was the day that all the experts, like the literal experts predicted that interest rates were going to start dropping by 1% very quickly from where they were. And here's what happened. They went up one and a half percent over the next four and a half months. And so the purpose of us doing this now, I agree, we should look at all the costs and that's what will be in the presentation is that in the least we should look at a no cost to absolutely minimal cost, save you money now. And then if the rates do drop further, we can take advantage of it again. And it didn't cost you anything the first time, but it also protects you. Like if they, if all the experts are wrong, like they were on May 10th, 2023, I would hate for you to miss an opportunity to save $737 a month right now. And then it just evaporate because something crazy happened in the economy. So Jared, are you taking their existing principal balance? Say that I'm assuming if you're saving $700 and I know you're in a market in Northern California with big ass loans. So say you're looking at my loan and I owe $1.41 million. Are you trying to write the new refi at the exact principal balance? So it's truly no cost yep. and use what I do rebate is, pricing? Yes. So what I do is I give options, right? So I don't ever say this is just do this. I show them here's no cost right? Here is like a no point loan. Here is a, a option with paying points, but here's what I think interest rates are going to do as long as nothing crazy happens over the next 15 months. So I show them all of the information, right? And then we talk about the strategy and which strategy do you think is going to work best for you? Um, one thing so I want once, to Sorry, once again, when you saying no cost, are you only no talking about points or are you saying, cause like if, if in general you have, I don't know, $2,000 and lender fees with or without appraisal and you have on your loan we'll size, we'll credit probably, those. okay. And you have like four grand in title fees with those, that big ass loan. Now you're talking about $6,000 and closing costs, maybe to reset up your impounds. Are you pricing it with a rebate so that you can lender credit and wipe a hundred percent of costs out and keep balance the same or you right. yes yeah okay so no cost is truly no cost that's yeah. that's what you're selling and so yeah. that would carry a higher rate than yep. maybe minimal cost but no points and then yep. maybe cost plus one point so you could in yeah. theory go no cost some cost which is escrow cost or whatever and then third is normal refi costs, which is what we oh, all sold right. bazillions of products on. And then the fourth option would be waiting. And how much are you projecting? Like if you're currently selling a 6%, what are you putting on that fourth option for 15 months from now? 4.99. Just because it's a sexy, like, I think we'll get there someday, maybe. 1% under the current market. Okay. So you're, and you're pitching a 5.99 somewhere. Cause again, that's sexy and feels good. It, well, every situation is different. So I'll give you an example, okay? On this person that I'm talking about, they financed a $2 million loan. It was a big loan, right? So it was Sniper once again. I was like, this one's a no-brainer, right? It's a $2 million loan. Um, they're at 7.375% interest rate, right? And we could do 6.75% and credit everything right now. The escrow, the you know, title and escrow, the lender, no points, et cetera. So the, the reason showing the 499 in the future and then also showing like a regular closing cost is that, hey, we could do this right now and save you, you know, 700 bucks a month and you're saving that for free that way when and if it does go to 499, 
then we can execute that and we can spend money at that time. And guys, I want to insert the goals. something. Woo! I wanna, and I want to insert something. So Jeremy took over the Tuesday interview last week with Daniel Saw, and you had a whole hour of Jeremy and Daniel having this conversation and more conversations. And I just put a clip to one I took out of that. I called it Jeremy Forcier's vision casting refi strategy. So what you just heard, there, there's a little two minute version of Jeremy Forcier's vision cast refi strategy. He actually pulled up one of his total cost analysis. And then I put a link to the whole Daniel Saw interview. Guys, it was gold. I mean, two epic uh, producers who are also epic producing leaders, just the two of them talking, talking shop for an hour. So check it out, links down below. And, and then Jeremy and I, either next week, we're gonna, you know, him and I were talking at breakfast today about um, how everybody needs to keep the eye on the long tail of realtors, but everybody needs to be really efficient and effective with how they're approaching the refi market. And that means auditing your sales process and your workflow. And Jeremy, I guarantee you his workflow of how he's delivering these sniper shots at scale is better than 99.9% .9 of loan officers in America. Like he's really got the way he's using the mortgage coach integration with Encompass, the way he's, you know, like when he reaches out to the customer, it's like, do you want to save $480 or $120,000? And they're like, what? And then next thing you know, they're like, let's go. And so just stay tuned within the next week, we're going to do a whole little training workshop on workflow. One other question, Jeremy. So we just talked about giving them the rate thing, which is like brilliant in, in every bit of it, because we know psychologically, if somebody's tied to rate and they're like, oh, you told me 675, I thought the rates are at 5.75 or something like that. So I like the way where you're doing there because you're giving them options now. You're now advising, you own the ball. You're not even advising them to lock. You're getting them to prepare. It's all a soft commitment. There's a takeaway close. I mean, there's so much brilliance in the why behind the why behind the why of how you're presenting and where you're doing it. Um, and, you know, you make it easy for them to go, well, yeah, let's do that. And let's stay connected because you are a guy that's thinking ahead. It builds trust. I mean, there's so much good stuff there. My question is, if you then show them, keep your payments the same and prepay and pay off the loan that much faster and save 297, are you putting that fourth or fifth strategy on the same TCA? Or are you yeah. giving them two TCAs? Yeah, so I'm putting it on the same one. So um, here is the the overview of a psych psychology. And by the Can way, this you is show one it, real quick, Jeremy. Do yeah, you have one? Yeah, show? I'll show one. But the with the psychology that is not, I'm not a psychologist, but this is my philosophy in yes, psychology. You right? Yes, you are. Is is that like I want to always turn in the conversation into me not selling something. And then the person is now trying to sell me based on the information I give them. Yeah. Right. So like I have multiple clients that are emailing me multiple times a week right now. Tyler's one of them who's like, Hey, should we look at locking today? I already told him, Hey, we're going to touch base next Wednesday. Let's keep. And he's like, I don't know. Do you think we should lock? like now he's trying to sell me on right. should we lock this right now? That's a committed person. Right. Like like that is committed. So I don't look that uh, look at that as irritating. I look at that as that. No, I won that deal. <laughs> like that's my deal. Just when does he want to lock? He might lock with higher costs than I originally told him. Like it, it, it doesn't matter. Like it's what they want to do. Now, uh, an example of what uh, Dave and Shayla were talking about. Let's see. Share. Um, it would be this person. OK, so oops, didn't mean to highlight that. So this is a person that I can I sent this out to, right? Because um, he actually called me and I said, hey, it's not really there quite right yet. But if you want to get prepared ahead of the wave, he's already fully underwritten and approved one week, got all his stuff in. It's currently at 699. This is what his payment is. Um, I said, hey, at 5.99, if we want that to be your target, right? I think that will happen in the next few weeks. Now, um, I'll, I'll sidebar this in a second. There's a second strategy here, but Here's what your here's what your look like at five nine nine and what your payments are. It's going to save you three hundred and fifty three bucks a month. Now this is where I put the payoff faster. Like hey, if you want to keep your payments the same with a lower interest rate, you're going to save two hundred and forty one thousand dollars over the life of your loan. So what's more important to you, saving 
$353 a month, or if you, the payments are fine, you can actually save $241,000. And then, as I said, I also put the future one. This is what I think will happen the second time that we refinance if the market um, cooperates with us over the next 12 to 15 months. So this person was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get it set up. Now, the, the, the strategy that's not in here that's not talked about is this person's approved now, and they're asking me, hey, when do you think we should lock? So yes, yesterday, I got on the phone with them and was like, hey, we could lock right now at 6.625% with no cost to you. Like, it, it won't cost you anything. You're, you're going to save half the amount. But then if it does drop again, I mean, we can redo it again. Do you want to wait? Like, or, or did you just want to lock it in? He's like, you know, let's just wait a week. He is selling me. He's like, let's wait a week and let's yeah. see what it looks like next week. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, that sounds great, Jeff. Right. I, like it, yeah. It's the ultimate assumption because you're saying, I told you I'd take care of you. I'm, I'm taking care of you and I'm not sure it's right for you yet. Yep. You know, it's Phil Jones language, right, Todd? I'm not sure if this is for you, but would you be open-minded to? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's freaking amazing. That's, that's it. Good, good that's job, it. Jeremy. Great Thank leadership you. on this. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, would you share, um, make a copy of that, share that TCA so that we can put that in the show notes? And, and if you're a producing manager on this, guys, and you're not going to start doing this and leading by example, and then you can use this call at your next sales meeting, I guarantee you we'll put a couple clips together. They'll be in our YouTube channel so that there's some, you know, two and three minute sales training clips. Pure, pure gold. Jeremy, we're almost out of time. Is there any questions you wanted to make sure you ask Shayla before we run out of time? Um, when are we going to get together? But we can offline that. Um, and then like second one would just be, and it could be a separate conversation some other time, is that like what you see the difference in the people that you lead um that are doing the work versus the people that aren't like like what what's the what are the things that you're seeing from a character standpoint or like that they're doing um that the other people's aren't that are still struggling number one characteristic is enthusiasm pure and simple and enthusiasm can't be faked people can tell if you're genuinely pumped up, passionate, in love with your business and what you're doing for people. And so you have got to get your story right. You've got to get your story right. And just being on a call like this, the people are going to hear this message. They're leaning in to catch the right story, to catch the right energy so that they can bring that out into the world. So the people who are obsessively leaned in, learning and you know, dialing in their enthusiasm, I think is huge. The second thing is track everything, like get dialed in on the workflow, as you said, Dave, so that you know where you're squandering time, where you're getting stuck in procrastination, where you're overthinking. Um, and then third is a pitch for my event, which is in Reno, Nevada, November 13th, 14th. Again, I will go back to what Deb and I talked about. If you have not met that mentor, um, you know, Jeremy, I think you're a mentor for 90% of the people in this community. We all want to be like Jeremy and be able to communicate with that, that easy breezy confidence that feels so safe and warm and, and, um, familiar. Um, but like literally get your ass in a plane or in a car and come to Reno because I've handpicked all these people and Jeremy, you should be on stage this time. I might have to squeeze your ass in the agenda and yank you over here and see your daughter, um, because I, I really believe that when you actually get to see people and you network with them and you realize they're just like you and they're just as insecure and they have their own vulnerabilities and they have their massive strengths and their massive weaknesses, you've got to build around your strengths. You all have assets. Maybe it's that you're an amazing networker and you can go out and talk and schmooze people. Maybe it's that you're an amazing strategist and you're not so good at that. Maybe it's that you're really dialed in and organized but I guarantee none of us on this call are all three of those. We're just leaning hard on the strength that we've got. So I put in the chat, I'll put it in one more time, but um, I didn't I didn't put the actual, any of the event details so, in here. So here's the deal guys. Shayla is putting a link to sign up. There's still seats. By the way, I'm Jeremy's EA today and he is approved to speak at your event. So if you can fit time Thank in, you. Uh, he will drive the four and a half hours. <laughs> And he'll take his daughter out for dinner and he will be there. Um, 
I hope that's okay, Jeremy. Uh, but anyway, you. I'll let you two work that out via text. Um, Todd, get ready to do the win by new clothes. But, but guys, I just can't emphasize enough. It's time to get in the right rooms. But more importantly, to be in the right rooms, be present in that room, taking notes that you can take action on. And then what differentiates good production versus great, it's the action that they take outside of the events. And both these people just epitomize that. They're always front row. They're always all in, personally and professionally. Deborah, we're going to let Dodd do the, the win by noon close, but is there some little world of wisdom that you want to bring down before Todd closes it out? I would say to add on to the effort and attitude is just getting really clear on your why. Like when the mission and vision is big enough, and I had recently watched a documentary with Ray Lewis and how, um, you know, it was his effort and his hunger that people People said he would be too small, but like when you have the passion and the fire, even Tom Brady, it doesn't matter how much skills or talent other players have. If they don't have that burning desire and they haven't found it, that's going to motivate you when you don't feel like doing the work. Like he, he talks about what it was for him, where he showed up every day and he was a beast on the field. Um, so, so take time and figure out like, why are you doing this? And if you need help getting clear on that, then I'm sure Shayla has, can help you with that. No, Deborah, <laughs> you are the one, you are the one that helps people find their voice and unlock their voice. Deborah, a discovery call with you is like literally going to sit in front of God and you shine back the brilliance <laughs> and be, uh, seriously, like I, I could have probably picked something not so godly, but I mean, honestly, <laughs> You would discover if you're stuck on your brilliance and how to articulate what's inside of you, if you feel like you're locked, Deborah will help you unlock and then put a lock that bad boy. Unlock you. <laughs> All right, Deborah, hey, Deborah, put a link or direction on how people can reach out to you. And you heard it from Shayla, and, uh, who's had a, a working relationship and who has had Deborah help her with her social marketing. Uh, she is the best. And I love I love that. So Mr. Booksband, win by noon close. Wow, you know, how do I how do I close that uh that out? You know, first off, I have to say I've got serious FOMO that you and Jeremy are hanging out together today. I missed uh, you know, it's been gosh, five years, I think, since right before COVID that the three of us hung out there with a group of cool people in your office, Jeremy. And uh, you know, it's just I, I think you got a easy, easy action plan. You gotta go to the Mortgage Coach YouTube page, if you're watching this live and you need to watch this this afternoon when the video is put up, if you're watching this, you got to rewatch it, right? Shayla gave us a masterclass in the first half um, really on um, the trajectory of business and what it takes to win in this market, uh, especially how to have the right attitude. And then, you know, the last 20 minutes, Jeremy and Shayla role played and walked through the conversations that you need to be having with your clients today. And Jeremy just said it, he went through, he looked at the clients from the last 18 months and he prioritized them and made phone calls. And guess what? Those people are all doing loans with Jeremy. And if, I, I'm hoping you've all done that, but if you haven't, guess what? Today's a great day to do that. And then lastly, I'll just tell you, you know, I really thought Shayla's event was uh, super unique earlier this year. I had the honor of, of being part of that event. And I'm really excited for this one that she's got in November because it's the path to wealth. And, you know, y'all know that we've been on this big journey, right? First home IQ, how do we help people more financially literate? And Shayla's going to not only be teaching business tactics, um, this whole idea on life and why that Deborah's talking about, but we're also going to have wealth conversations there. So it's going to be an amazing group of folks um, that are speaking. I know John Cheplak's the headliner. She's going to have real estate agents there. It's a great opportunity to bring your real estate agents to learn alongside of you. But, you know, bottom line, this is what this community is about. And then Shayla said only 90% of people really want to be like Jeremy. I think it's pretty much all of you. I don't know who got like Jeremy, but, you know, if you do, uh, if you don't like them, I don't know who you are. So we, we probably can't be friends. But uh, as always, uh, great to be here. Thanks all for watching. Dave, Deborah, always great being all here right. with you. Jeremy, Shayla, gosh, great day. Yeah, well, let me let me close it out, guys. So a couple, couple things I want everybody to do. First of all, make sure you make a informed decision on attending Shayla's event. Check that out. Um, it is time to really think about where am I at as a modern mortgage advisor? There is an assessment. You could go to modernmortgageiq.com. It's free and take the assessment. Both um, Jeremy and Shayla have taken it. Jeremy took it last night. He absolutely loved it. Uh, if you want to be level 10 at advice, I mean, it really is simple, is becoming a mortgage coach. If 
If you're not a mortgage coach, you can sign up at our 10X page, trustengine.com forward slash 10X. And if you're a producing manager, like this will be updated within a week where under optimized refi tab, we're going to have those Jeremy scripts. Uh, you know, so this is a free resource. If you need to learn week workflow, you can sign up for our live trainings. We do live trainings every day of the week. And then we have videos. So all of these things, if you want to be a level 10 advisor, be a mortgage coach, learn how to use this. Shayla Gifford, you are amazing. Any, any, you're, you're a coaching leader. We've gone six minutes over, but how do you close out? Like if this was a leadership and you were managing, this was one of your meetings, you know, the conversation we have, let's hear the Shayla Gifford taking action close. You need to assign yourself four hours of homework this weekend and you need to watch this recording again. You need to go back through the links that Dave just posted. I hope you're on the text messages for uh, Dave with um, Trust Engine and you're getting these recordings. There's no excuses, but don't be that person that's walking around blindfolded right now. Like get in as if your life depended on it. Get good at these strategies because your finances, your checkbook, your ability to sustain being in this business might be saved right now because of the conversations you're going to have from this training. This seriously, literally could be a career changer, this, this conversation right here. And for those of you that it's the catalyst to get you to think bigger in your vision and to take action and, and get out in the world and get serious about building the life you desire and design, um, it was that good. I'm just so honored to be here. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was amazing. And I did put that number. If you want to get on my text club, I it's 949-799-0837. Also at savageinsights.com, that modern mortgage IQ quiz or assessment is at the top. And my mobile club is right below that. So Shayla, you are a gift. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to apologize for going over because it was that good. Take care. <laughs> Me neither. Bye.